I'll tell you what, Earl Shores is the man. I'm I'm writing I'm gonna have to write down his phone number. <laughs> for God's sakes, I don't know how in the world this happened. Earl, I know I've called you before. Yes, you have. That's okay. Somehow in your in my phone, your name has multiple uh, email addresses and no phone number. Okay. You're with us now though. Okay, cool. It's all good. How are you, sir? I'm good and I'm wearing my white socks. You're wearing your white socks? Yes. Well, of course. That's what you should be now wearing. Tell, do, you, do you wear white socks because you can't have the ink touch your skin? It's not ink. No, it's no, down. no. Just you guys were saying this was, this was the white sock book. So that, I'm wearing yes, the white sock. Yes, it is the white sock. <laughs> but, the, but the other book, am I wrong? The, the first the book? book? Yeah, yeah, the other book is uh, you need to be up for some reading. That's it's for the sure. colored socks book. This is the picture book for the white sock crowd. The other ones for the intellectual well, dark good sock Good for crowd. you, intellectual. It's a color book, though. <laughs> it is a color book. You're exactly right. I have to wear the uh, the argyle socks with the uh, the other book, <laughs> like the uh, dolphins end zones last night. Yes, like the dolphins end zone. Why would you bring that up? First of all, I'm holding the full color electric football book in my hand, and when you guys sent it to me uh, about a, I don't know two three weeks ago, it got in the mail. My wife's like, "What is that?" I said, "That's not for you. That's for me." <laughs> and I opened it up, and she went, "Where did you get that?" I said, "My buddy Earl sent this to me." And it's amazing. And for about the next 15 minutes, whatever she said, I have no idea. <laughs> I was engrossed in my youth Man. by holding this book again. Thank you so much for sending in. Tell me, what was the motivation for this one this time? Well, this one, we always wanted to do a color book way, way, way back in the day. I mean, your dream of was doing a color book. And obviously, there were too many words to possibly do a color book with the buzz. And uh, we fortunately were able to say everything we needed to say in the buzz and then some. And um, this book came together in a, uh, a hotel parking lot in Richmond. We were at a book signing for the buzz in uh, August of 2013, and uh, it's the only time that the three of us, Michael Cronenberg, Rodi Garcia, and myself, have been together as a trio, and we were in this hotel parking lot smoking cigars. Actually, I was getting nicotine poisoning because I don't smoke cigars, but um, and we came up with the idea of we would do a color book, and probably the proudest thing is that we, we took it from the puffs of smoke in a hotel parking lot to the finished product of of what you have in your hand, and uh, you know, there's Rodi's stuff and Rodi's photos and my photos and Michael's handiwork in the design, I think, is uh, just, it's amazing, I think, what he's done with putting it together. I mean, we had the photos, but um, he finished it up. We were debating lions or cowboys on the cover. There's the lions. Ah. Uh, you're good calling you guys. The socks give it away. With the electric football cowboys, they have a three-stripe sock. It, um, where the, uh, the lions have, it's, uh, there's two blue stripes there you can see, and, and the silver is in between. How do you get this thing? If you're sitting at home listening to it going, I got a husband, I got a dad, whatever, who's an electric football nut, how do I get a hold of this book? This book is on the Tudor Games website. They just got a brand new shipment in. Um, they sold out of the first shipment, which was very nice, and we're on Amazon.com. Um, that's both, both places you can get full color electric football. Just that's all you got to search. Full color electric football. It will come up with the uh, with the, how much you charging for this one? This one is Amazon's giving it a bit of a discount, but it's twenty four ninety five. It's the list price. Nice. I, I I say it's a perfect stocking stuffer. Yes, we'd like to think so. Yes, yes. A little big for the stocking, but it's perfect. Yes. Like, we got big feet. <laughs> There we go. Big socks. Now, Earl, what year did Electric Football Zenith, when did they sell the most units? They sold the most units um, in the late 60s and early 70s, probably like 1970 to 73. Um, that, that first year, Tudor got the NFL license in 67, and they sold out of everything they had. And for the next 10 years, electric football was the top-selling item for NFL properties. That's... I love that statistic, and it's one that's really hard to wrap your head around in this day and age, that a toy was the top earning item for electric for, for NFL properties, which is now a billion-dollar industry, where at the time, they were just looking for things to, uh, to license. Uh, Earl, I got the music in my ear. I'm so sorry for calling you late. Here's what I'm going to ask you. If you can, you want to hang around after the break. If you sure. can't, I get it. You can? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. We're going to take about a three-minute break. We'll come back. Earl Shores is joining us live. We're talking about his uh, creation, full-color electric football, the book. 
The magazine? I don't know. Is it a book or a magazine? What do you call it? It's a book. It's yeah. a book. It's a full. Fu- we'll ask. What's the what's the difference between a book and a magazine when we come Man, back? I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> you better research. You got three minutes. We're taking a time out. We'll come right back. You're listening to Leave in the Yard, Fox Sports Radio, 1400, 94.1 FM, ESPN, Texarkana, live from the Bud Studios. You're listening to Leave in the Yard. Fox Sports Radio, 1400. Fifteen minutes until six o'clock. Leaving the yard. Fox Sports Radio, fourteen hundred ninety-four point one FM, ESPN, Texarkana. As we jump right back on the phone, Earl Shores is joining us live this afternoon. He is one of the uh, authors, creators, brain children behind Full <laughs> Color Electric Football. He uh, back in the uh, oh, about two three years ago joined us talking about uh, the the first version of the book, The Buzz. It came out. Uh, what year did that book come out? It came out in 2013. 2013. It has been that long. The Unforgettable Buzz, the book that came out. Uh, uh, re- really, it is the Bible of electric football, and, and we we talked about it back then. That book was almost an intimidating. When you start picking it up and going through it, going, holy crap, I didn't know anything about electric football. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like I said, we said hopefully we said everything we needed to say in those 650 some pages, but <laughs> but hopefully it, it it we think it reads pretty well, and you you could pick it up and, and read what you needed and put it down, and then if you started back up in the next year, we had a, the chapters were broken down by years, uh, you could pick right up from where you were and and just move at your own pace through it. But yeah, it it, would, it took some time to get through it. And, and if you are, are listening, we've been talking about the new book, but you want to get the old one, and, and I'm I'm shocked. You you said uh, a number one. It's selling very well, and number two, it's still out there and for sale, and you can grab that bad boy on Amazon. Right. You can get that on Amazon or at the Tudor Games website. It's also there, too. So, yep, they're, they're, if you pick up full color, you can pick up the buzz at the same time. They're, they are companion books. They truly are. Where the full color is one where you can pick it up, and as uh, Chuck said earlier, within 15 minutes, you can go through and, and read and, and see all the photos. And But we think there's enough different stuff in full color electric football, though, even though you'll go through it in 15 or 20 minutes, you'll come back to it, just because there's so much Tudor stuff that's never been seen before. Like, we're talking about the Cowboys. The Cowboys get one of the feature pages in the whole book where we have uh, for the 1968 Tudor ice ball prototype game that was never ever made, but there is a photo of a prototype that they made in the Tudor warehouse, or the Tudor company in Brooklyn, but they didn't, they decided they didn't sell it, but uh, that's it's a one of a kind game. It's it's it doesn't exist, but it existed for a while. Now, Earl, to me, this is the perfect what I would call coffee table book for the man cave. Uh, you know, baby boomers love their man caves now. And electric football, you've been out doing book signings and all on, on for a few years on this. Isn't it like just something that's beloved by baby boomers? Oh, absolutely. There was nothing else like it at the time. That's something when you say that you sound so you, I feel so old or so Grandpa Simpson when I say that but you you had to be there at the time uh, when these games showed up we didn't have anything like that at all you had electric football but when the game showed up with the miniature NFL teams on it for most people regardless of your experience whether you were a little frustrated with it or whether you saw you know, each Super Bowl game played in your mind or before you, it, it still had a hold on you. It's still something special. It, it's like the Christmas toy for those of us of a certain age. It's, it, to have a, the NFL game under your tree with the NFL sitting in the end zones and the little um, goalpost that looked just like the real goalpost, the single posted one, it, it just hits you so hard on Christmas morning that it stayed with you. It, it stayed with tens of thousands or millions of baby boomers today. It's still, if you say electric football, they know exactly what it is. Even when you go back to that Jimmy Johnson commercial they did a year ago with the Bud Light one, they didn't have to introduce the game at all. They just unveiled it, and they assumed you would know what the game was. They didn't have to explain it. 
Now, or I'm trying to remember. I think mine was coats and jets. Is, is that possible that it was a Super Bowl? Oh yeah, Bowl? 1969 Super Bowl game. That was yeah. a that was a great one to have. That's one of the that probably is the all time electric football game because that was the first Super Bowl that Sears ever sold. So it was the first Super Bowl game that Tudor made for Sears, and it was available in the 1969 Christmas catalog. And a beautiful game. The field looked just about exactly like the Orange Bowl field with the powder blue end zones and the Lombardi Trophy at, at midfield, even though it wasn't the Lombardi Trophy at the time. See, I had the uh, I had the Cowboys Dolphins from there three, you go. from uh, what two years later, three years later. That's the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that was a good one too. Yeah, that's the one I had growing up. See, I wanted a Cowboys one, and I got coats and jets. That yeah. was. Yeah. <laughs> but they put the Cowboys in 1972 to put the Cowboys on their um, 6:20 game. It was the Rams in dark and the Cowboys in in white. You know, you mentioned Lee Payne's name in his book quite a bit. Is, is Lee still alive? No, unfortunately, he died in 2003. But we, we talked to him. We were very fortunate to talk with him, and he provided us with a lot of the materials that are in the book. He, he provided, he gave them to us. So um, For those it's fortunate that he didn't get a chance to see this, but that his work is, as you said, throughout it, and he was a major influence yeah. on electric football. And for those who don't know who he was, can you give us a thumbnail? Yeah, he was the uh, developer, product development director at, at Tudor, and he worked for them for starting in the early 60s. So the 3D players that you see, he was responsible for making the 3D players. He was responsible for coming up with the concept of painting the NFL players, and he, he designed the games, he designed the boxes, uh, he, he the little catalogs that came in the game that we all remember the little rule books with the players lined up that you wanted to order he took all those photos and it was just a major 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 influence uh, it, with the design and the function of electric football now you know one of the things i'm looking at in this book is the brass masters and for for folks out there who are electric football fans this by itself you you could you could do about these five or six pages you've got and that by itself would get me explain to me about what the the bass ma the brass masters are we've got three different sets of or three different kinds of brass masters in there the, the first one are there's a group of six we call them the magnificent six and they were never made into production but what they were is lee payne used those brass masters to make wax players that he painted and presented to Norman Sass to convince Norman that the 3D 3D player concept was possible. So those are those are the, whatever you want to call them. They they are like the Aldevi Gorge fossils of electric football. That that they are this that's where the 3D players came from. The other uh, one we have is a brass master that was Lee Payne's, and it's the tackle figure and. If you see it, everybody recognizes it because it became one of the poses in all the rest of the Tudor games from 1960, all the NFL games, you would recognize that, that tackle pose. And they made two sets of those. One set went to Hong Kong where they made the actual players from, and one set stayed in the U.S. And actually Pete Rozelle ended up with one of those Brass Masters. We're not sure exactly which pose he had, but he, he was given one of those because that, that's how big a deal electric football was. And the other one was the quarterback figure, which in the early 80s, Tudor began making painted quarterback fig NFL quarterbacks. And th this was the master that they used to make those players. Well, how much are those things worth? I don't know. It, it, they are priceless. Um, they're, they're so one of a kind. And we're so fortunate that we can take care of them and, you know, we that they didn't that they didn't get melted down because what happened to a lot of those things over time is they either ended up in the trash or they got melted down so it it's really something that that we have any parts of the production line from electric football what's a full set if somebody finds one in the attic now and puts it on ebay what do these things sell for now a, a game or the teams uh, if you if you got it in a box with both the teams you got with it and you know somebody stuck it in an attic and somebody finds it and puts it on ebay what would it typically sell for depends on the game i mean the nfl games are all going to sell better than the generic models the super bowl models are the most valuable uh the early super bowl one rather the one you had the jets called to it, that goes for upwards of three hundred dollars the other super bowls go upwards of two hundred dollars um, the the Vikings Chiefs Super Bowl one is a special one, and 
it, it, it all depends. That there's the larger games are more valuable than the smaller games, and as I said, anything with NFL, especially if your teams are complete and not broken, and a lot of people find games where there'll be multiple sets of teams in there, not just the two that came with the game. You may have five or six, and that, that's a real find, and it's, the sky's the limit. Also, the teams have come from different errors, so the teams from the late 60s are, have more value than teams from the 70s. That they just there's, there's a different size, a different feel to them, and they're painted differently. So, And there's not as many. Like the Steelers with a yellow yoke, the Redskins in burgundy with a spear on their helmet, uh, they didn't sell a lot of those teams because Tudor didn't make as many teams. The teams that weren't so good, they didn't make as many, and they didn't sell as many. So there's just, it's a limited supply. All right, Earl, we're out of time for today. Again, we want to remind folks you can go on to either Tudor's website or Amazon.com. You can get full-color electric football. That's the new version that out that's out. Or you can get the incredible Buzz. That's the uh, full-length book that's been out uh, for a couple of years now. They are great gifts. Earl, thanks so much for joining us again. It's great um, talking to you. Thanks for having me on. It's always, always, always a pleasure. You guys you are great friends of electric football. Well, Nick, Next, uh, next time you got a book, let us know. Okay. All right. Have a good Christmas, all right? Okay. Thank you. You too. All right. We're out of time for today. Back tomorrow again. We'll start the show tomorrow afternoon. Coach Montgomery from Tulsa is going to join us. And then 530 tomorrow, it's uh, Whitney Keeling from Wascom High School. We'll get ready for his state championship on Thursday. You guys take care. We'll see you tomorrow night. Our program airs every Monday through Friday from 5 till 6 on Fox Sports Radio 1494-1 FM ESPN Texarkana.